I'm going to teach a little bit about on dieting today in, in order why is it important to give tithes to the church. This is not a part of the preaching, this is just part of offering time right now. Um, we have to understand that the, the church is one organism. As I explained, this ministry is so into other ministries because the, the church in itself is a whole church. This is not a divided small church, holy group people. We're all in it together as a church. And this is something that we really have to get in on. And uh, so I wrote here that the church is one body of Christ organism. We have to get that. So, I, the thighs, the money that we have is like, Jesus talked a lot about seeds. The man who went out to sow the seeds. He's, you can use all the parables in many ways. And in one way, when we talk about seeds, it's in regards to uh, when we sow in good soil. We need to sow the money in good soil in church. Uh, in order to get the blessing when we sow. See, if you have hard ground, if you have dry ground, hard, dry ground, and you put a seed in it, what's going to happen to the seed? Nothing, <laughs> right? It's just going to die and won't grow. But if it's in good soil, the right soil, the right temperature, the right light, the right, what it, you know, the whole, you get the whole picture, it will grow and there will be fruit. That's the whole purpose of sowing and using the parable in the sow in the sow seeing. There are four principles of sowing and reaping in the church. I'm going to take one today, and then I'm, over the weeks I'm going to go through some of the others. Um, the tithing is in on, I'm going to read in, in, in the Bible what, what God is talking about when, when, you, when we are tithing. There are four principles. There are tithing, first fruit, aim, alms, and uh, what's the last one? Tithing, first fruit, alms, harvest, seed, harvest. seed harvest, right? Yeah. This is the tithing I'm going to address today. When we are tithing, God protects us from curses of the world, depressions, things falling apart, recession. Recession is we are unaffected of how the economy of the world goes on. <laughs> yes. So as you can clearly see, it's very important to thigh. He is keeping us under his protection of covenant. It's the covenant grace he gave us through that. He is protecting us when we are thiding. I'm going to read to you what he says. This is Malachi 3.8. Will a man rob or defraud God? This is God speaking. Yet you have robbed and defraud me. But you say, in what way do we rob and defraud you? You have withheld your thighs and your offerings. You are cursed with the curse, for you are robbing me, even this whole nation. As you can clearly hear, it's quite, it's quite important that we thigh because God is protecting us. It's like the protecting money. <laughs> but it's also more than anything else I would say is to show God, I trust you. Yeah. I trust you. We know how hard it is with money. Jesus talked in parables more than anything in regards to money. All, most of his parables were about money. Why? Because it's the number one demonic force Satan is using against us in the world. Mm -hmm. Money, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Everything in the world we see today is regarded around money, isn't it? Money equals power. Well, do you want to, you know, do you want the church to grow? You got to sow in the church. You can't sow, in, you know, you got to sow in a, in a good church with the people that you know, a prosperous church, you know. 
And that's why I'm trying to really get in depth with this. Okay, so you, because it took me years to get this. I didn't have proper teaching on it. I had to search out myself a lot, but this works. I sew more and more now, <laughs> more and more. And I'm not worried. I'm like, that's yours, Lord. It's all yours. I trust you. Every time I sew, I trust you. I trust you. I, tr I want to show him. And he puts a number in my heart. This, this is the thiding. This is one tenth of our income every month we give. This is just the thiding. Sometimes he's asking me to offer, give me an offering. So, so, and so much for this and that. And I'll just do it. I have no problem with it. My flesh have problems with it. <laughs> Doesn't it? And I just, I just know it's my flesh. I'm just going to do it. There's no argument within me. But the Satan comes and he's like, oh, you can't afford it. That's how he talks. You can't afford it. You can't do that. And then you, and he has all these, you know, long list of what he's saying, you know, and you know them all. But these are the protection money. In the Old Testament, a curse is sickness, depression, things falling apart. If you have a car and it constantly falls apart, you know, God is protecting us. You need money for this, boop, suddenly you get the money for it. That's the, it's God. He loves us. He's our Father. But we need to understand this principle of tithing. Bring all the thighs, the whole tenth of your income into the storehouse. What is the storehouse? The church. I prefer really good, healthy Christian people to be the most wealthiest on the earth because they know how to economize with the money. And he says, bring it into the storehouse, bring it into the church. What is the storehouse? It's something that stores up, and he's saying here, meat. Food, we will never lack. Mm. We will never have the fear of lack. So we have to understand these things. That they may be food in my house and prove me now by it. And he says, prove me. When you do it, you can tell me, prove me, Lord, that this is true. This is what we can say to him. And he will. He loves us. Says the Lord of hosts. If I not will open the windows of heaven for you and pour out a blessing that there, sh uh, that there shall not be not enough room to receive it. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know if I have to say anything on that one, but he will bless us. <laughs> he, this is the, I was just thinking, I'm sorry, Lord. I don't, you know, it's the mob money. <laughs> um, it's just a picture I had in my mind, you know. In, in, in Sicily, you pay the mob money for protection. You know, it's, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a, basically the same principle here. It's protection money mm -hmm. from devour. I'm going to read on that. And I will rebuke the devour. Isn't that pretty amazing? Yeah. So when I thought, and we... When we thought it should be something that we do as naturally as breathing. Mm -hmm. Every month we thought. Every tenth of my income, I thought. It's the first thing I do. It's the first thing I do. I thought. Mm -hmm. First, one tenth of everything I have, I give to the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, and I will rebuke the devourer. Who is the devourer? It's the one who comes and eats. Eats our fruit. Eats our eats our food in the store, right? eats everything. And devourer is also the one speaking curses over our lives. And he, and, the, and, the, and he says, I will do it. So he's actually, when we're thinking, I'm leaving that job up to the Lord. Now you, it's your job because your word says so. You're the one doing it now. I don't have to do it. I don't have to walk around. I, you know, I rebuke you, Satan, for this. And I rebuke you for that. And I, it's really hard work when you have to live like that, you know. Yeah. 
Hey, we tried it, right? In yeah. the beginning, we rebuke everything. I rebuke this, and I rebuke you, devil, and you do it. We know how to do it real time. And it's a lot of striving in the body of Christ, and we wonder why. The Bible's clearly on that. He will do that. It's faith. When we give, we, that's what I'm talking about. When we give, it's a, we're showing God, I trust you. I trust you for this. And the devourer, he will try to come against us with fear. <laughs> oh, no, you can't do that, you know. Fear come in the night when we're alone, doesn't it? And we say, I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. Uh, and I will rebuke the devourer in the Old Testament. It was pictured as, it says here, insects and plagues. A plague for us today is something, I would say, it's a constant worry of things that we can't seem to get over. We're plagued. It, it keeps like a record in our head. Oh no, with this, and we, we have this, oh no, with this, and we feel, we feel haunted inside of ourselves. That's our plague today. We don't have pests and, you know, we don't have these diseases here in the Western countries. Some countries they do. It's very obvious. When God cursed, when God wanted to get the, the, the people out of Egypt, he sent 10 plagues. And this just, you know, it's a picture of that. That God will keep us, he will keep us from the plague. Our houses, da 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 da, all these things, he will keep us. But we have to do, we have to do things the Lord way. We just simply have to. And I will rebuke the devourer insects plagues for your sakes. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. What is fruit? Everything we do in life where we want to be prosperous, we get a great new job, we want to keep it, you know, we want to keep that good fruitful thing going on there, you know, all these things, these are fruits for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We get a new relationship, whatever it is, you know, the, all these things are fruit for us. Neither shall your vine drop uh, its fruit before its time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. It's all, it's, the, you know, it's really important. So, neither shall your uh, wine drop before its time. If fruit come off a tree before its time, we can't use it. We can't use it. So we have to understand these principles of, when, when we're doing it the Lord's way, he, he will let us know timing in things to do. When is the right time to do this? When is the right time to do that? You know, he will let us know. We can hear him. Mm -hmm. So it's that protection. And, and then he says, I like this, and all nation shall call you happy and blessed. It's going to be obvious on our lives that we are blessed. Never in history, <laughs> when you see wealthy Christians, there is so much persecution on them. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's horrendous, you know, persecution from other Christians, you know, it's like, what? <laughs> but it's really, it's the jealousy. So those people who are jealous, of those who have, it's because they haven't really gotten what I'm talking about. This is not just for me or you, this is for all Christians, but we have to do it the Lord's way. Uh, call you happy and blessed, for you shall be a land of delight. There is nothing more delightful than walking with the Lord and things will come. But the thing is, when we do it his way, we can say to him, but your word says that you will fix this. And he will. <laughs> he will. Mm. 
says the Lord of hosts, yes. And we will, and when we walk in that delight of his presence in that sense, um, we can relax. We can be at peace because we know I'm doing what everything you're telling me to do. This is your table and the enemy, he will try to come, but we're at peace because we know God is taking care of his things. Actually, in the new covenant, it takes two people to make a covenant, doesn't it? In the new covenant, it just takes one, mm -hmm. Jesus. Amen. We don't even, this is grace, we don't even have to be in that sense perfect, but he will do his part anyway. Mm -hmm. Amazing grace of Jesus. Okay, did you get something out of this? Yes. Mm -hmm. Was it was it helpful? Mm -hmm. And please come and and say I didn't really get that or this part or whatever you know. Just let me know and, and we'll get oh you know we we'll get we we'll go through it because we need to get this. I I was so thrilled when I figured this out you know because there's been so much confusion in on these things and also because. A lot of times in, in churches, uh, the tithing has been, been given into alms. And when you give to alms, I'm going to go into that. When you give into alms, you're just going to get that back which you sowed. Mm -hmm. it's, there's a, a lot of misconceptions here. The tithing, I'm just going to close up with this. The tithing is that God keeps us protection. He keeps us under his protection. This is the thighing part. It's showing, we're showing him, I am obedient to what you say. I'm going to do it every time I have the money. I'm just going to do it. So this is the thighing part. The others have different areas that they're touching in on. I'm going to go through them. But it's just too much if I, you know. And then we have the preaching, and it's going to be too much. So, okay. All righty then. Did I miss out on anything on this? Um, oh yeah, just I want to say this too because when when we have healthy churches. The church is a place where we can unite and find strength. It, and it has a direct influence into society because society becomes a better place. We need to see a change of hearts and lives. God opened the most amazing doors. We need healthy churches. We need, we need him to, we need the church to grow and expand. Um, I just wanted to see if there was something more here. Yeah. God gives us a spirit of love, power, and sound mind. There is everything, everything in the Bible, everything in God is connected into one another. So the devourer here is also getting a sound mind. That means also that we're not spending money that we shouldn't spend. So you can see it's quite important that we, that we get this and that we, we, because when we get a sound mind, when we get into the walk of Christ, the walk with Christ, the intimacy, the into me see relationship with Christ, we can, we can, it becomes so clear what to spend, what not to spend, how to spend and who, all of these things becomes really obvious for us. 
This is the sound mind. That's what I wanted to take out as well. Okay. Today I'm going to talk about this. Now I'm moving into the preaching. Uh, I'm going to talk about faith. And, and what does faith, what does faith mean? And what is this faith thing? <laughs> what is this faith thing? <laughs> I don't really get it. It took me years to get it. Uh, I'm going to read um, from the New Testament. Jesus being invited to the Pharisee's house. And uh, I'm going to read to you. Uh, as I'm going to come into the difference between the Pharisee and the woman. They're kind of like two dividing forces working within us. And they're a picture of that. Uh, this is Luke 7, 36. Jesus was out ministering to the multitude. And uh, <laughs> and comes back and, and then one of the Pharisees asked Jesus to dine with him. He went into the Pharisee's house and reclined at table. In those days, reclining at table is lying down and eating. You didn't sit up, you lie down on the side and you had your feet this way. So Jesus was like, he was laying there, reclined at the table. And behold, a woman of the town who was an especially wicked sinner, when she, had, when she learned that he was reclining at table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster, alabaster flask of ointment perfume, very expensive. Um, especially wicked sinner. It was totally unheard of for a woman to come into the Pharisee's house. She was breaking the law to get to Jesus. When you break the law, you're desperate. You're desperate for Jesus. You need him so much. You're desperate. You break the law. You don't care. She knew she was wicked and she knew he is the only one. He is the only one who can forgive me and set me free. This is the first, this is the first time out of three where Jesus is anointed before his burial. This is also significant. Everything Jesus does is ministering. <laughs> Everything. Especially wicked sinner. In those days, it doesn't really say clearly in on the text. But in those days, usually it would be a prostitute. A prostitute in the holy people's house, a Pharisee. It was unheard of. What is she doing here? And she brought this alabaster perfume. Some people, some commentary says that it must have been the perfume that she would put on before doing her time with men? I don't know. The Bible is not clear on it. Could it have been a new perfume she would buy for Jesus? I'm just throwing pictures out here because I want you to get in the, mm -hmm. in the attitude of the place. And a Pharisee 
we have to understand Pharisee, they had a lot of rules and rituals and things you would do and things you wouldn't do and why you would do them and how you should do them, when you should do them. We all know that. Own doctrine. I think this is a great idea. I'm going to do that. <laughs> and I'm going to do it this way and this way and this way. And don't let nobody tell me what to do. They were stuck in the Old Testament. Mm. And here you have Jesus lying at his table with 30 feet. Because he's been out ministering the whole day. And standing behind him at his feet, weeping. Remember, he's lying down like that. And she's standing behind him, weeping. She began to wet his feet with her tears. And she wiped them with the hair of her head and kissed his feet affectionately and anointed them with the ornament perfume. She's not speaking. What an expression of speaking is the tears, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Just crying, crying on his feet, washing his feet. <laughs> and then she, she, didn't, she didn't take a towel or a cloth to, to dry them off. She used her hair. Mm -hmm. In those days, women would usually bind their hair together, and if the hair were loose, then so were you. Mm -hmm. But she would, she would dry his feet with the hair. Now when the Pharisee, don't we know these people, people who we think, they're just a little too much in on Jesus, you know. Can't they just relax about this Jesus thing, you know? Why are they so excited about this Jesus thing, you know? It's too much happiness around him. Too much worshiping of him. <laughs> we know people like that, right? Kind of annoy the flesh because the flesh wants to decide how it should look. It's a picture of that. Can you hear the inner division start going on? Mm -hmm. Can we surrender in worship mm -hmm. regardless of how it looks? She's a picture of that. Mm -hmm. We only come to that point when we're de desperate as she is. Mm -hmm. That's why we have to know how much he loves us. Because when we figure out how much he loves us, we become desperate for Jesus. And we don't care. We lose, we lose the outer sensory perception of the world just like she does. She loses everything around her. She just needs Jesus. She's standing and crying, drying, drying his feet, the dirty feet of the dust of the road. And he's, he's lying there and the Pharisees are around. And then, now when the Pharisee, Simon, who had invited him, saw it, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would surely know who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him. It was not, you, you didn't do that in those days. For she is a notorious sinner, a social outcast of devoted to sin. Now, in my terminology, when you talk to yourself, you usually say one word. You don't sit and you don't say, if this man were a prophet, he, he would know this woman, he would surely know who and what sort of woman this is, who is touching him, for she is a notorious sinner. You don't speak like that to yourself. He was thinking these things. He was looking at the whole scenery of her crying and Jesus being there. 
And Jesus, <laughs> I love this, replying, said to him, even though if he was speaking to himself, then he was the only one to hear it. He's speaking, he's speaking to himself. So he's the only one who can hear what he's saying. But Jesus is replying. I'm telling you, Jesus knows every thought you have. <laughs> Even the ones that you think that he doesn't hear. Everything he knows. To me, hallelujah. He knows everything that goes on. Even the things, and we think, why are you not responding to this? Why are you not, you know, no, no, I don't understand this, Jesus, but he is seeing everything. God one time showed me in the most outstanding way how he sees every thought within me. And it brings me safety, it just gives me safety. But he is, and he's thinking to himself. And Jesus is replying, the text says. Replying, said to him, Simon, <laughs> I have something to say to you. And he answered, teacher, say it. A certain lender of money, there you go again, Jesus talking about money. <laughs> Jesus always talking about money. <laughs> In parables, a certain lender of money at interest had two debtors. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. When they had no means of paying, he freely forgave them both. Now, which one of them will love him more? Simon answered, the one I take for it, for whom he forgave and canceled more. And Jesus said to him, you have decided correctly. Then turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? When I came into your house, you gave me no water for my feet. This Pharisee knew all the customs, but he didn't do one of them. He actually did not recognize Jesus really for who he is, honoring who he is by doing those things. He saw him because he said, if this was a prophet, there must have been some kind of recognition. But he didn't honor Jesus. We can't honor Jesus when we're full of ourselves. She was not full of herself. She had lost everything of herself. We need to die to self. <laughs> but he had not, and he didn't honor him by washing his feet. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, which also was a custom. When you had people enter your house, but she, from the moment I came in, has not ceased intimately to kiss my feet tenderly and caressingly. That's worship of Jesus. Mm. She's worshiping him, mm. showing her faith in him. She's not speaking any word. What Jesus does needs us to speak. He knows. He knows everything. <laughs> Can you imagine that Pharisee who knew everything and Jesus saying these things? <laughs> you did not anoint my head with cheap ordinary oil, not even that, which was a custom when you recognize someone as a king or a prophet, you know, you would anoint the head with oil. But she has anointed my feet with costly, rare perfume. <laughs> he 
he's telling him off, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Wondering, wondering what went through his head. The Bible doesn't really say, but he knew all these things he should have done. Mm -hmm. But when we are full of ourselves, we don't want to wash Jesus' feet. We don't want to wash each other's feet because it's dirty. It's a picture of that. Mm -hmm. I'm more than you, you know. I'm a Pharisee and you're Jesus, you know. Chill, you know. Mm. I heard about you, now I'm checking you out, you know. We have this attitude. Can you hear the attitude he's carrying? I actually know what I need, supposed to do, and need to do. But I'm not going to do it for you because, you know, you're not really the right person. <laughs> You're not the other Pharisee of the council, Sadducees. You're not a Sadducee. Those were the ones who were higher up. <laughs> but you, Jesus. She didn't have any problem with that because she has lost herself. Mm -hmm. She was desperate for him. Then Jesus says, therefore I tell you, her sins, many as they are, are forgiven her, because she has loved much. Amen. Does Jesus love the Pharisee equally? Yes. But she loved much. How did she love much? Worshipping. I need you. What's the first commandment Jesus says? Love your father with, whole, with all your soul, your mind, and we need to love him. And then love your neighbor as the same. <laughs> but he who is forgiven little, loves little. I just need you, Jesus, to help me with this one thing, and the rest I can take care of. Then you will only be forgiven for that little. But if I give Jesus my whole life, I will be forgiven much, and I will love much. All right? So therefore, we, we give ourselves to him. I am, we become the sacrifice for him. That's what you did in worship. I sacrifice myself to you. I give myself to you. And he said to her, your sins are forgiven. Can you imagine Jesus talking like that? Wow. Then those who were at the table with him began to say among themselves, these were the other Pharisees, I would I presume it would be. It's usually depicted like that. The Bible doesn't really say. Jesus is there, and they start saying, who is this who even forgives sins? They start talking about him as if he's not even in the room. <laughs> we do that, don't we? Wonder who can help me with this problem. And Jesus right next to us. Mm. <laughs> but Jesus said to the woman isn't it interesting he doesn't go into conversation with them Jesus doesn't run after people <laughs> when we have a problem we go to Jesus we ask him we say, help. Mm -hmm. Don't go in the cocoon on your own. Oh, I'm going to do this on my own. Don't do that. That's what they did. And Jesus not, Jesus the same. Mm -hmm. When we go in cocoon-like mode in ourselves, he's just waiting on us for us to, you know. He's the same. But Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. 
Your faith has saved you. Your faith, did she, did, did she see anything? No. But she knew it was him. Mm -hmm. She knew it was Jesus, Jesus for the one. She, he is the one who can... Did she have any evidence of that? No. That's faith. We walk on faith. I don't see anything, but I know it in my spirit. She knew in her spirit. This, the Bible does not, doesn't talk about him, doesn't talk about her, that she heard him or anything. But I think maybe at some point she must have heard him, maybe on the Sermon on the Mount or whatever, she must have heard him speak. When we hear, when we hear Jesus speak, the Holy Spirit speak to us, mm -hmm. you know, the whole world can tell us stuff and we just know. We just know. We just know. How can you do that? I just know because God told me. And we become that desperate for him. Your faith has saved you. <laughs> Your faith has saved you. Your faith has saved you. We need our faith to save us in every situation we are in. I don't know how to solve this, God, but I'm trusting on you and I'm doing what you're telling me to do. And God will come through. He will save us. Mm -hmm. He will show us. That's what I mean when I say saving this in regards to this. He will show us the way. He will lead us, He will guide us, because that's what the Holy Spirit does. Mm -hmm. Amen. Your faith has saved you. Go enter into peace. When we walk in faith, I'm, I'm talking about faith where you know that you know that you know. I'm just, I'm just talking about that faith. You're in peace. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's okay. I'm fine. No. You're in peace. That's the most awesome thing about walking the Christian life in faith with Jesus. It's the peace. It's peace. Don't we all want peace? All the time. <laughs> In freedom from all the distresses, when we don't have peace, we're distressed, right? And we constantly go over, how am I going to do this, and how am I going to do that, and how am I going to fix this, and how am I going to make that, and, 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 and when the clock is, is six in the night, and we're just really tired, you know, and wondering why I'm so tired. <laughs> distresses, the sickness of the world today that are experienced as the result of sin. Distress is actually a sin because when we are distressed, we're not trusting God. Mm. So that's, a, that's, re that's regarded as in that as a sin. I don't, you know, I'm just, I'm in my mood here, I'm worried about this, I'm stressed about that, I'm doing all these things, and blah, 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 blah. That's actually the old way, the sinful way, the sinful man. And it's actually a, I'm going to turn around, it's actually a insult to the Holy Spirit. Because there is power in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. There's power in the faith walk where you just want. And Satan hates when we do that. We can't see anything in our lives. Nothing is turning out the way we want it. It's actually in, in a period of time in my life, the more faith I had, the more opposition I experienced. <laughs> I was like, I am walking in your faith, Lord. I don't understand it. And it was just, it just kind of grew. I was like, what is this? It just got worse. It just got worse and worse. And I was like, what is this? but I walked through it. It doesn't say how long. It doesn't say how long the valley is. In Psalms 30, 30 uh, 23, David is talking about walking through the shadow of the valley of the dead. 
doesn't some valleys are shorter than others, aren't they? You know, mm -hmm. some valleys are quite long. Mm -hmm. and you just keep walking. You just keep planting your faith out there. You're just saying, no, you, I'm just going to stay here because you said it. I'm going to stay on my horse. I'm going to steer and I'm going to run in that direction. And we need to learn that, you know, some things takes time. It just takes time. It's normal. God is, how can I put it? In that sense, he is, he's kind to us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's merciful. Because if we gave everything to us right now, my brain would blow up. <laughs> you know? And he's taking us thing, you know, through things step by step. Mm -hmm. That's sanctification as well. Mm -hmm. We grow in him. And we grow in that, you can say we grow in faith. Mm -hmm. But we all have the equal amount of faith. The thing is with faith is that you, you put it out and you leave it there. You know, you put, the, you put the seed in the ground. If you put the seed in the ground and you keep going out every day and take, you know, trying to take it up, it won't grow. You put it out and you water it and you have faith for it. What's the water? The Word. You stay in time with Jesus. Your Word says this. Faith cometh by hearing the word of God. Romans 10, 17, the word says. The word of God is a now word. It's a rhema word. God will speak to us in now. He will say something that will touch your heart right now. That's a rhema word. So we study the Bible, we keep reading the Bible, we keep getting in on the Word in the Bible, because we need the Bible, the Bible, the faith is the Word. If God has told you to do something, He will do it. Don't go into any kind of Oh no, you know, it didn't happen after a week, you know. I'm just going to take it in, you know. Oh no, come on, faith, let's go over here, you know. Don't do that. God has seeded many seeds in my life. I'm just kind of, I just get more and more excited about, wow, when is that going to happen? I have faith for them, I can't see them. I don't know, some of them, I don't know exactly how they're going to look, but he's showing me awesome thing he's going to use me for. I can't wait. But I know I have to grow in order to let my seed of faith be out here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, need to, I need to come low. I need to constantly bend my knees like she is, constantly worshiping, constantly really running to Jesus with everything I have, mm -hmm. just like she is. Um. <laughs> because there is this, the Pharisee is also, he's like, he becomes the picture of the world. Oh, you can't do it like that. You have to do it like this. And you can't do it like that. Why are you doing that? No, that's too much, you know. Can you please not do that, you know. Can you please not? That's the world. All these doctrines we have. Jesus was extremely radical at his time. Especially toward women. He constantly lifted them up. And he's doing it in this, per, in, this, in this story as well, lifting women up, not rebuking her, not telling her off anything. He's lifting her up, honoring what she's doing for him. But the Pharisee is a picture of the old life. When we are in the old life, we can hear Jesus. When I do it my own way, I can't hear Jesus. <laughs> we need to get this. Mm -hmm. 
when I have my own thinking of rules and rituals and systems and all these things, I can't hear Jesus. <laughs> but when I lose myself to Jesus, when I worship him in my heart, I can hear him. <laughs> I am being set free from the Pharisee within me. <laughs> there are many things that need to be laid down in our lives from our past systems, things we were told. Oh, you can't do that. My mother used to tell me, for instance, you always look so serious. How annoying is that to hear? Very annoying. But I wasn't, I was just thinking, you know. You look so angry, but I'm not, I'm just thinking, you know. That's the way I look, what do you want from me? I can't. That's the thing I had to lose. I am who I am. Really accept that. God created me for who I am. There are many things our parents told us that we need to do or shouldn't do, or why we should do it, when we should do it. The world is the same. And the Pharisee is a picture of that. I'm just taking out stuff here for you to reflect on in your own life. That's why I'm saying all these things. Just reflect in it on your own life. What did, what did I hear? What did I hear that I'm still doing? What, did, what am I doing that I still need to lose in my life? Why am I doing these things? Why am I... <laughs> why am I acting like that? Why am I, you know, why, why am I so fearful in this situation? Why am I, you know, constantly trying to prove that I have this, this right to be here? When we die to ourselves, when we, the old man died, just the way she's pictured here, when we, when we die to the old, I don't care anymore. When we die into the arms of Jesus and into his love, because that's what he does, he's squeezing us to death with his love. When, I, when we die into that, in that we can be renewed. That's the renewed creature in Christ within us. We can't, this is not a process in that sense to really figure out. You can't, you can't mentalize it, you know, you can't put this into categories. It's a heart position. If you feel convicted in something that, you know, I'm still doing this, I'm still doing this, just give it to Jesus, you know. God will show you if you need to, what you need to do with it. How, that's how I want to say it. What you need to do, just give it to him. Jesus made it so simple for us. He's made it extremely simple for us in that sense. That we don't have to do all these things and figure them out. And why do I have to do this? And all these issues going around. Jesus made it simple for us. He shows us you need to lose that attitude. You have an attitude with that person. That's, that's the way he talks to us. You need to change that. And you say, okay, Lord. What he's actually doing is that he, <laughs> he makes it simple. You need to lose that attitude. And you say, yes, Lord. He's asking us for us to see it mm -hmm. so that we repent. Repent means I change my thinking. That's repentance. I change my thinking in this subject, in this, on this person, in this situation. I repent, I change it. And that's it. That's it. <laughs> it's that simple. But sometimes we want to we wanna dramatize it, you know, we want to make it a big thing, you know. Oh, I have to do this. Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. Don't go and say, that's old stuff. In the Old Testament, they would rip their shirts and throw ashes on themselves. And oh, Jesus took all that. 
we're in a time right now where things are coming together. There is a speeding up in time, if I can put it like that. Just, you know, we need to get this. We don't, don't go into any of these old ways of, think, of, of doing things. This is Old Testament things. Just, just know, just recognize, and be at peace with it. What do I mean by that? I don't know why it is, but a lot of Christians they just feel so shameful. I feel so shameful about this. I feel so shameful about that. I'm shameful about this. Guilt and shame and condemnation. If God shows you something, I'm sorry, Lord, forgive me, I repent, I won't do it again. And that's it. <laughs> and you move on. Don't linger in it. That's the, old, that's the old way. That's the Old Testament way of doing it. God loves you for who you are. He just, he just want to see you free in that. Amen. Just laying down. Even when we do stupid, even when I, when I do stupid things, I'm like, oh, that's stupid. You know, what? I'm sorry, I won't do it again. But I don't feel shame. I've lost that. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's lost. It's gone. It should be gone when we're Christian. Mm -hmm. We should recognize, you know, these things and just say, I'm sorry. And then I just keep walking in my faith walk. Because if I keep constantly going back into shame, guilt, condemnation, I'm not walking in my faith. Mm -hmm. All right, so it's important. No, I'm not going to touch on that one, you know. That box, that city over here and guilt and condemnation. You know, we have cities in our heads. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. We need to break down cities of fear, shame, guilt, condemnation. Break them down, just, you know. What's the fastest way to break sh shame and guilt? Doing the opposite. Ah, oh, hallelujah, I'm free. <laughs> right? It's the opposite. You know, it's not like, oh, am I now really not feeling any shame anymore? Yes, you are. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. <laughs> we will make mistakes. We will say stupid things because we're here. When we are here, it's part of what we're going to do. And Jesus not hung up on details. Thank you. I just so appreciate that about him. He's got, he's got a really broad back, you know. He can handle a lot. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, you know, yeah. because I make many mistakes. And he's just, you know, yeah, that's fine. Just move on. Can you hear the freedom I'm trying to... Can you feel it? Mm -hmm. That's church. All right, freedom, joy, you know, we're being set free. We're laying down stuff. Mm -hmm. We feel strengthened when we hear the word. I hope you feel strengthened in, in some areas of your life where, yeah, yeah, I have to, now, you know, I, I wanna attack this now. Good, that's church. That's what church should look like, feel like, feel like. Not that we hug up on feelings, but we feel it in the spirit. Mm -hmm. When I preach, I need to hear these things. Mm. Amen. You know? Amen. I need to hear it. Mm. Amen. Because when I preach, God shows me things while I'm preaching. <laughs> I need to hear this. I need to hear about faith. Mm. And we need to hear about it over and over and over. I never more than any in my, re in my life realized how much I need to hear about faith. Constantly he needs to hear by faith. Otherwise, I can't fulfill the plan God has for my life. It's so utter important. Mm -hmm. We should hear about faith for two years. That's how important it is for us to get it, really get it. Just get it, get it, get it, get it, faith. What is faith? Faith, I can't, I'm walking on, you know, faith is what we hope for, what it's unseen. Yeah, yeah. We need to hear it. We need to contemplate on it. Amen. 
It's the only way we can walk the Christian life, it's in faith. Mm -hmm. And faith cometh by hearing of the word. Faith cometh by hearing of the word. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the word of God is alive. It's not, I'm not reading about some romance book, whatever. No, the word of God is alive because the spirit of God is the word. Mm -hmm. That was good. The Spirit of God is the Word. It's alive. When God created the heavens and the earth, He spoke. He spoke things into existence. He didn't sat and think. He spoke, let there be light. <laughs> Boom! There was light. I feel very encouraged right now. <laughs> I can, you know, I can preach for hours because this is, I'm just it becomes the well. Mm -hmm. We're a living well. Yeah. Amen. We should. This is how we. When you're down, preach to yourself. You know the word says that. Blah. Do that. I do that. I encourage myself. The word says so and so and blah, 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 blah. I just I just speak the word of the of the Bible. And my spirit says, yeah. I just feel the spirit. Mm -hmm. I experience a lot of attack all the time. Don't think that because you know, I look happy and, you know, cheerful, which I am because I have God. Yeah. <laughs> I finally learned to use my sword. Come on, Satan. I finally learned it. And that's faith. Mm -hmm. I'm standing my ground. You said it, Lord, I'm going to stay here. Stand on the word and everything else can fall apart. And it usually does. And I'm just like, oh, okay. And then God comes. He does that. That's faith. Mm -hmm. We need to hear it. And a covenant of grace, we need to hear it. I'm going to preach so much on it because we need to hear it. What is covenant of grace and faith? We think, we think we have to pray the right way and do things the right way and we get hung up on all these details, you know, and it's just really tiring. That's not covenant of grace, that's works. Mm. All the things in the Old Testament, Jesus fulfilled in the New. Mm so that we can, we can live that. That's amazing. That's amazing grace. That's why we sing amazing grace. But we need to get in on what it really means. Otherwise, we're just going to sing amazing grace. Amazing. We don't understand. When we get it, we're like amazing grace. We just, you know, we just, we get desperate for him. And we see him step by step, inch by inch, all the time changing things in our lives, putting things in order. Jesus is putting things in order in our lives. Mm -hmm. And you can feel it. Mm -hmm. uh, things in my life were just, oh, I just lost that. Thank you, Jesus. I know it's not me. The things it just takes out of my heart. Mm -hmm. Even today I experienced it. Just, I just felt it. Mm -hmm. and, ah, it's God. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's amazing grace. No heart shirting can do that. No psychologist, no nothing, nobody, no, 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 no. Just Jesus. He's the only one who can come in here and work on our soul, work on our heart, work in our spirit. The word, the prophetic word I had today was relax. <laughs> That's a rainbow word for today. Relax. 
I reign. I'm in charge, says Jesus. Just relax. <laughs> it's opposite with him. The more we relax into the things he's called us into, the faster he can do it. Amen. Don't try and help him. <laughs> Just do what he's, you know, told you to do and that's it. Don't go into any fixing mode. Maybe I can just help him a little bit. <laughs> yeah. oh. No, just <laughs> <laughs> relax. I am a doer. Personally, I am the ultimate doer. It almost killed me. It took me a long time to learn to relax. But when he says it now, I just, I'm just going to go out here and hang out with you. Mm. Because actually that's just really all I want to do. Mm. Hang out with Jesus. Mm. But you, we all know this, it just slowly we just, mm. we have this thing that comes in and maybe I can help with it. Maybe, don't you think it's a good idea, Lord? Isn't that idea from you, Lord? No. No. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. not <laughs> no. Small things. Even small things. Just relax. Lean in on my presence. Mm -hmm. Lean in on my presence. Mm -hmm. A lot, of, a lot of times when we relax in that sense, we stand firm on the word, the last thing he told us to do. That's it. And it is the hardest thing for the flesh. When it gets quiet for three weeks, the flesh is like, why is nothing happening? And it's just kind of, why is nothing What takes 10 years here on earth can take, I would say now, six months for Jesus. Not even that to change. Just wait, because he's working on you. He's working on the inside. Working on the inside. He's working on the inside. Changing that attitude, lifting that thing up in you, restoring, he's working on you, healing the wound, he's working on you, and we stand, and he says, relax. Mm. It's faith, isn't it? Mm. We're back to faith again. We're back to, I trust you. Mm. We're back to singing, you reign, I don't reign, but you reign. Thank you, Lord, for the word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you that you are here among us. Thank you for everything that you're doing. Mm. I ask you, Holy Spirit, that you will speak to your people, that you will touch them right now and speak to them in regards to what needs to what needs to be looked at on the inside, Lord? Just touch the heart in whatever way you want it. Holy Spirit, just touch your people right now on the inside. Let them know there is comfort and that we can relax in you, Holy Spirit. That's the real word, Lord. You put in my heart. Mm. 